Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with Kuwait's Deputy Emir and Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. His Majesty the King was assured about the health of the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. He wished His Highness the Emir speedy recovery and prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless him with lasting good health. His Majesty confirmed the solid, long-standing relations between the two countries and their people and expressed pride in the progress witnessed by both Bahrain and Kuwait. He also praised His Highness Sheikh Nawaz's speech to the Kuwaiti people that preserves the security and stability in Kuwait and pursues the development process towards a future of prosperity. Kuwait's Deputy Amir expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness to be reassured about the health of the Amir, stressing that His Majesty's fraternal feelings embody the depth and strength of the brotherly relations between the two countries and their people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely and Secretary General Dr. Yasser Al Nasser issued the following statement. The cabinet congratulated His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa on the successful medical checkups he underwent, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless His Royal Highness with lasting good health and happiness to continue the development march witnessed by the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. On the 19th anniversary of the establishment of the Supreme Council for Women headed by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The cabinet hailed the council's achievements made in support of the March of Bahraini Women Development at all levels. The cabinet then expressed appreciation and pride in the medical and nursing cadres who stand in the front lines to combat COVID-19 and their dedication to protect the people as well as their keenness to perform their humanitarian and societal roles which had the most significant impact on Bahrain achieving a high global level and recovery rates, testing, treatment, and close follow-up of the infected and of contacts. The meeting also commended the community awareness and responsibility of citizens and residents in preserving the achievements made in combating COVID-19 through more commitment to preventive and precautionary measures. Upon the recommendations of the Executive Committee led by Her Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Cabinet approved the procedures of developing the policy of permitting foreign business owners to practice professional activities which comes to develop the system and activate it optimally. The Cabinet also approved the transfer of the National Communication Center's affiliation to the Director General of the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister in order to develop the Center's role in unifying government media information. The Cabinet approved a decree by law amending a number of provisions of Decree 84 of 2016, which establishes and organizes the National Communication Center. The Cabinet approved the recommendation of the Ministerial Committee for Financial, Economic and Fiscal Balance on amending a number of provisions of Decree by Law 15 of 1977 to issue government development bonds to increase debt ceiling from 13 to 15 billion Bahraini dinars. The Cabinet was briefed on the achievements of the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects in the first half of 2020. The Cabinet approved a draft decree amending Article 173 of Decree by Law 54 of 2002 on the rules of procedures of the Representatives Council and the required constitutional and legal procedures. A proposal on subsidizing electricity and water for Bahraini small and medium businesses was approved. The Cabinet also approved the government's response on passing residency in government health institutions and that the training of medical students for residency is limited to graduates of local universities only. A proposal on transforming Askar Sports Field into a youth center was approved to be implemented through Askar Sports Complex. A proposal on integrating media and communication technology in public school curricula was also approved. The cabinet was also briefed on the report of the interior minister on the results of inspections on drug stores at Salmania Medical Complex. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, visited the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and met with the Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud. During the meeting, they discussed the close historic fraternal relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the development they witnessed with the support and directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. They also discussed areas of bilateral cooperation and ways to enhance them and to continue the joint coordination and exchange of views on the political and security development in the region, in addition to issues of common concern. The Saudi minister hosted a lunch banquet in honor of Dr. Zayani and the accompanying delegation. After that, the Saudi minister awarded Dr. Zayani with the King Abdelaziz Sash for the second degree 
in implementation of the order of the Saudi monarch and appreciation of the efforts he made during his tenure as GCC Secretary General. Dr. Zayani expressed gratitude to the Saudi king for the generous gesture. He also expressed pride in this high honor and thanks and appreciation to the support he received during his tenure from the Saudi leadership and people, as well as the cooperation and support he had received from the Saudi Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Zayani praised the prominent role Saudi Arabia plays under its leadership to strengthen Gulf cooperation and integration, to achieve the goals of the GCC system and its sincere efforts to unify ranks, consolidate solidarity and cooperation between Arab and Islamic countries, and enhance security and stability in the region. The reception and lunch banquet were attended by the Ambassador of Bahrain to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah al-Khalifa, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political and Economic Affairs, Dr. Adel bin Saraj Mardad, Ambassador Azam bin Abdul Karim bin Qain, Undersecretary for Protocol Affairs, and a number of officials and accompanying delegations to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Ministry of Health Undersecretary and member of the National Task Force to Combat COVID-19, Dr. Walid Al-Mana, participated in the interactive program Tarabut 2, organized by the Bahrain Institute for Political Development Remotely. Dr. Al-Mana expressed appreciation for the efforts and contributions made by the health sector members in Bahrain to limit the spread of the coronavirus, praising the cooperation of citizens and residents and their high level of awareness on the importance of following precautionary measures. He discussed the most important developments related to the epidemiological situation in the kingdom, stressing the abundance of medical supplies and the medical readiness in hospitals. He also called on citizens and residents to adhere to preventive measures and avoid gatherings as much as possible and maintain the health safety measures followed in these exceptional circumstances. The General Directorate of Civil Defense carries out awareness campaigns on fire risks as part of its efforts to enhance public safety at malls and markets. More on this report. The General Directorate of Civil Defense implements its awareness and educational programs as part of its efforts to limit accidents and fires and reduce their causes. Its Protection and Safety Directorate has launched an awareness campaign on fire prevention requirements at malls and markets. Besides their awareness efforts, the Protection and Safety Directorate continues its supervisory role on the necessity of providing fire prevention requirements in establishments. Through this campaign, the General Directorate of Civil Defense, represented by the Directorate of Protection and Safety, aims at the implication of civil defense measures. That's through the engagement and partnership with the community, information exchange, and also fire protection inspections. That is all carried to protect lives, premises, and the objects and the well-being of the occupants here in the kingdom. Our organization tries and works hard to enrich the safety culture and also at the protection of the people in the kingdom. There is no smoke detectors, yes, so we have many types of de detections. So the most suitable detector in your shop is smoke detectors. So you must provide smoke detector in your shop. The General Directorate of Civil Defense is very keen to qualify its personnel for the swift response to all cases to carry on its noble mission of protecting lives, possessions and national gains from all types of risks. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,165, with 392 recoveries, 292 registered new cases and one death. 118 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 171 are contacts of active cases, and three travel-related. The deceased was a 41-year-old female citizen, and the Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions, and avoid public places when possible.